Hi, I'm Catherine Maloney and I'm a professor at Point Loma Nazarene University, currently doing a sabbatical in the Dorstein Lab. Um, Point Loma is a small, primarily undergraduate institution and we actually don't have an LCMS, um, much less an instrument capable of tandem mass spec. We do, however, have a GCMS, and so I'm really excited to introduce you to the new GCMS workflow on GNPS. This is going to make the power of molecular networking and GNPS available to a much wider audience than ever before. Um, in the G GNPS platform, researchers are encouraged to share their data and their reference libraries um, with the public. And so that means that even if I don't have uh, an expensive reference library available, I'm going to be able to search my data against all of the libraries in GNPS. So GCMS analysis has two steps. Um, you can see here the first step is deconvolution, which takes the experimental data and generates spectral patterns that correspond to individual compounds. And then step two is the library search with molecular networking, which we're going to use to identify compounds that correspond to those spectra. Um, an important note is that the deconvolution uses neural networks, which learn spectral patterns across the entire data set. Um, so it's better to analyze as much data at once as possible so the neural nets can learn on a larger volume of data and do a better job. Um, the first step is to convert your files to MZML or CDF file full, uh, formats and upload them to Massive on GMPS. Um, so to do that, we have tutorials on our website. So if you click on help and then um, go over here on the left, you can see um, there's a data upload, con um, preparation upload tab, um, and then you can find the instructions here. Um, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna show that step. Um, I do want to mention three GC specific caveats for this. Um, the first one is that all the data for your job have to have been collected using the same exact injection and chromatography conditions. So like the oven program, the column, injection mode, and so on. Um, the second caveat is you're going to want to use the words GNPS and GC in the name of your data set when you upload your data. Um, and then lastly, for using the deconvolution method that I'm going to show you in this tutorial, you want to have data sets of 10 files or more. The more the better for the, the reason of the, um, the neural networks training. So for smaller data sets, you probably just want to um, follow our documentation to use a different tool like MZMind2. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use a data set that's already been uploaded to Massive. Um, so from the, GC, the GMPS homepage, I'm back here now, I'm going to scroll down to um, the GCMS data analysis. Um, I'm going to click on process raw GCMS data. And then here I'm going to give my job a name. So I'm going to go with GNPS uh, GCMS tutorial. Okay, so next I'm going to click on select input files. Um, and from here, this is where I could select my own, uh, my own files over here, but I'm going to use one of the massive data sets. So I'm going to go here to, um, to share files. I'm going to type in the massive number. Click import. Um, and you can see that the, the file pops up over here. Now I can go over to select input files and go ahead and insert those there. So I'm going to finish that selection and come back over to here. Okay, so MS Hub is the name of this deconvolution algorithm that GNPS uses, and this advanced MS Hub section um, has several places where I could adjust the parameters for the spectral deconvolution. Um, but the neural network behind MS Hub analyzes the data and determines which parameters um, are optimal for these data. So I'm just going to leave it on automatic. Um, in the advanced clustering section, I'm going to want cluster spectra should always be set to zero. 
Um, the time unit I'm going to want to set depending on the type of files that I have. So um, if the data is in CDF format, you would set this to seconds. If it's in MZML, you would set it to minutes. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. So it takes about a minute per file to do this part if you use the files in CDF format and a little bit longer for MZML files. Um, the time is also going to vary depending on how many other users are running jobs at the time, so um, this may be a while. Okay, so the deconvolution is complete. Um, I have the option from here to download my deconvoluted GCMS data in several formats. Um, for example, if I click here, this will allow me to download the feature table in MZMine2 format. Um, using this table, I could do a whole bunch of statistical analyses, um, but in this case, I just want to do molecular networking and, so, um, and search the special libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and click here to continue. This creates a GNPS job, and it's automatically supplying um, the MGMF file and feature table files that I generated before. Um, so we can see here if I click select input files. So here's that MGMF, or, excuse me, MGF file from the deconvolution, oops, along with my um, my quantification table. Um, because I used M MS Hub for the deconvolution, it also supplies information for something called balance scores. So that's right here. Um, the balance score gives information about the consistency of the spectral pattern across my data. So if I have a high balance score, that indicates that the spectra are reproducible. A low balance score indicates that the spectra are inconsistent or change from sample to sample. And that's a, an indication that they might just be noise. Um, if I were to perform the deconvolution using a different tool, I don't have to supply this information. Um, I'm also going to add a metadata table for my data set. So let's, let's find that. Here it is. But that's optional as well. So, um, so it will, will run either way. So I can finish my selection. Okay, so I can also select appropriate libraries, either public ones or my own. So if I go back into select input files, um, the NIST library is one that's protected by copyright, but my chemistry department at Point Loma actually acquired the library when we got our GCMS donated. Um, so if you're fortunate to have this or another spectral library, you can convert it to MGF format and upload it to GNPS so you can use it. Um, alternatively, or in addition, you can also use public libraries found in GNPS. So I'm going to just click over here on this folder um, and add it to my job. Um, I should point out that any of the GC libraries have the word uh, the letters GC in them. So any of these other libraries that don't say GC, those are for um, for LCMS. So we, we don't want those. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and insert that. There we go. And um, in addition, if I want to improve the quality of my library matches, um, I can incorporate something called COVAT's retention index into my job. And so if I wanted to do that, I would have to first run a standard mix using the same GC method as my samples, generate a carbon marker table as a CSV file um, that has retention information for each of those standards, and then, um, and then upload those to, um, to this area. But I'm not going to do that in this case. Okay, so now I'm going to look at some of these advanced search options. Um, so here you can, um, this setting called top hits for spectrum is gonna tell you how many, um, how many library hits it's gonna provide you for each of your um, GCMS spectra. Um, I'm gonna set it, um, I'm gonna set it at 10 so that we get the top 10 hits that, that um, meet our criteria, and then we can always manually look through them and see which one makes the most sense. Um, if I'm going to build a molecular network for my data, I can also choose uh, choose those settings here. 
Um, the minimum pairs cosine or the, the cosine similarity score um, is saying what the minimum score is required in order to connect two nodes or features in my network. Um, the higher this value is, um, the more selective it's going to be about which spectra are connected, resulting in smaller networks of highly similar spectra. Um, 0.7 is kind of a nice place to start. We can always adjust it up or down later if, if we aren't happy. Um, network top K is going to tell us, uh, or is where we're going to set the maximum number of connections that are allowed for a single node. Um, again, we'll just leave it at the default for now. Um, and then the maximum connected component size is how big you would allow your clusters to get. So if you have too many similar molecules in your data, you can set it at a lower value to kind of break up some of those large hairball clusters. But um, setting it at zero would just turn that off um, entirely. Um, there's some additional parameters I could adjust, but I'm going to leave everything on the defaults for now and go ahead and click Submit. Okay, the job is done. So let's have a look. Um, you can see in here I have several views that I could look at. Um, the first one, view all library hits. This is showing me now all of the reference matches up to 10 for each compound in my data set. Um, by default it ranks them in order of decreasing cosine score, although I could reorder them by any feature I want to in this table. Um, I can choose what columns I want to display over here. Um, so I might choose, for example, oops, to, um, to limit myself only to things with a balanced score between 70 and 100, which I can do like this. Um, and so that's going to cut down on a lot of the noise, um, which is kind of nice. If I click on this icon over here, it's going to give me a mirror plot. So this is going to show me both my um, query spectrum and the library spectrum, and you can see here that this one is, this looks like a pretty nice match. Um, if I want to return to the job page, I can just click here. And um, view top hits is similar, but it's only going to return the top library match for each of my compounds. Okay, so um, there's a variety of other things I can see here as well. Um, if I want to look at my molecular network in Cytoscape, I can click here. Um, and then this GraphML file is the file that I would open in Cytoscape to look at my network. Um, I can also look at my data, um, look at a PCOA plot of my data using Emperor, which is, is pretty cool. I encourage you to, to play around with that. Um, and lastly, if I want to work with a collaborator or potentially um, modify this analysis, this link here I can share with anyone. Um, they can look at my job and then they can also clone the job, changing some parameters around and then rerun it. Um, which is really great. So if you want to learn more, um, I strongly encourage you to follow along through the detailed tutorial at the link shown on your screen, and I hope you have lots of fun with GCMS on GNPS.